So we're actually gonna be looking at a video of Barack Hussein Obama of how he is actually saying how the turnout for Kamala is not the same as to when he was in office. And he's saying, black man, we gotta talk, okay? Black man, where you at? We gotta talk. That's what Obama's saying to y'all. So let's see what's being said, actually. So the immunities is that, um, we have not yet seen the same kinds of energy and turnout in all quarters of our neighborhoods and communities as we saw when I was running. Now, I also want to say that that seems to be more pronounced with the brothers. So if you don't mind, just for a second, I'm going to speak to y'all directly and say that when you have a choice that is this clear, when on the one hand you have somebody who grew up like you, knows you, went to college with you, understands the struggles and pain and joy that comes from those experiences. Who's had to work harder and do more and overcome and achieves the second highest office in the land. So as you've seen, he said Kamala is just like your everyday black man or black women even though he was only talking to black men so i guess kamala relates more to the black men than any other black woman does in america um that's what he's saying his words not mine so i actually want to replay this clip and we're going to stop it and i'm gonna have my commentary okay is that We have not yet seen the same kinds of energy and turnout in all quarters of our neighborhoods and communities as we saw when I was running. Okay, so he said, we have not seen the amount of turnout the same way as to when I was running to what we see with Kamala Harris. Here's the thing about that. This was a different time. In 08 and before, obviously, when you were running, when you became president in 08, when you were running for presidency, even though you're mixed, you were still the, the first black man, okay? You had the title of first black man out there, all right? And we seen that you didn't, you have some Obamacare with your Affordable Care Act. People are paying more for the Obamacare, the Affordable Care Act, in, for medical costs than what they were with what they had before. I even talked to my grandma about it. And she was like, yeah, you know, I was paying, she was paying like two to three times more than what she was paying before. I said, what? That's crazy. How was that? How was that accepted? How was that acceptable when we got stuff like that? You know, so I thought that was odd. And then you went to Flint. And if I got the video, I got the video, put it in there. That I see you and I hear you. We invest. Uh, can can I get some water? Come on up here. I want a glass of water. Get a bottle. A bottle of water. I want a glass of water. Everybody settle down. This is a feisty crowd. Thank you. I really did need a glass of water. This is not a stunt. What? He he wet his lips. He did not drink it. He didn't sip it. He wet his lips. There was an audible gasp in the audience. People were just like absolutely dejected. Why would you do that? 
I, I am sure that somewhere when I was two years old, I was taking a chip of paint, tasting it, and I got some lick. Yeah, that's like talking about like, well, I didn't wear a seatbelt and I'm fine. It's like, but there were tons of people that died. Backstage, the president sitting at the table with the criminal governor okay. decided set. to perform his stunt all, all over again. You know, generally I have not been doing stunts here, but you know. <laughs> that's not what I expected. That's right. what Snyder did. It felt like he minimized like what people were actually going through and struggling with. If you were actually lead poisoned, you would not be president. You would be janitor Barack Obama. We were holding on to hope that he would declare a disaster area. A disaster would give us FEMA. It would give us pipe replacement, get engineers in, in here. Then we could get Medicare for all the residents of Flint. As soon as he took a drink of the water and said everything's fine, that was that. Was that. And look at it, years later, it's still poison. When he came here, it was my president. But when he left, he was not my president. You went to Flint and you drunk crystal clear water. Meanwhile, they drunk some stuff that looked like this. What? So you're over here drinking crystal clear water. You're... Ooh, isn't this delicious? And their water still is not fixed over there because of these rusty pipes that was going on. No regulation for them. And it's just like, oh, it's okay. I mean, black people get lead poisoning. It's fine. What? So when people are seeing that you're doing, oh, and then you're all these wars, you're dropping so many bombs on people. I'm losing my appetite. And I just took some pizza out the refrigerator. Okay, so here's my thing. Um, one, you had the first black man or black person. Okay, sure. But we've seen that because you are black, that does not necessarily mean that you're going to actually do anything because you didn't do anything for anybody. Oh, we made gay, we made it so the alphabet community, woo, 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 we made it so the alphabet community could get married. <laughs> are most black men or all black men gay? Or, you know, at this point, it would be black people. So are all black people going to benefit from that? No, you didn't do anything that directly a hate crime bill, for example, or reparations or something like that. You didn't do anything that would necessarily benefit black people. Kamala went and said this. I'm not going to sit here and say I'm going to do something that's only going to benefit black people. No, I'm not going to sit here and say I'm going to do something that's only going to benefit black people. No. You know, so I'm looking and I guess I'm confused because people are seeing that you didn't do anything. You're the reason why people are saying, ah, I, I feel for me once. Shame on you for me twice, which he got two terms. Shame on me. OK, at this point, I, I can't fudge with it anymore. And now I was like, but but she's black. No, she ain't one. And two, that has nothing to do with anything. Then later goes on, it's not in this clip. Later goes on talking about, oh, it's because she's a woman. It, they don't. Now, do you have your incels and all that other stuff? Uh, yes. But I think reasonable black men, since we're talking about black men in particular here, I think reasonable black men are not going to care about that. They're going to say, okay, is this person good for the job? Yes, no. Are you going to put some money into my pocket? Going to lower this gas? Are you going to lower this food? Am I going to get some kind of loans or something? Nothing? Okay, let's continue. Oh, and then he's going to have that smirk like, like, see, you black Negroes, you male Negroes, you guys need to. Now, I also want to say Spit that it seems to be more pronounced with the brothers. So if you don't mind, just for a second, I'm going to speak to y'all directly. Now we're using the y'alls. Now we're the brothers. You couldn't just say black males. Black men. We got to say the brothers. Because if this was the same thing, let's say it was white men that weren't voting. What would you say? Our white brothers. You wouldn't say that. This is another way of how they try to pew, and then reel you in. This is another way to do it. 
and say that when you have a choice that is this clear, <clears throat> when on the one hand you have somebody who grew up like you, knows you, went to college. Uh, he said, you have someone that grew up with you, knows you, and then you're saying, oh, went to school with you. Just went to school with some black folks. I went to a PWI, U of I, final line, I, L, L, I, N, I. Okay. Uh, there were black people there. Not every black person is going to Howard or a HBCU. Okay. Just because you're around some black folks don't mean that you now are a part of the culture or whatever. Because you could then say that a white person went to HBCU so they know our struggle. They know us. That would be ridiculous. That would be ludicrous to say something like that. With you. Understands the struggles. And, and what struggles does she understand? What struggles does she understand? Because I guess her thing of marijuana, we could go and add that in there because it's a quick thing that just popped up to my mind. And you could go and add in the whole thing of marijuana be like, oh, well, you know, they love to smoke marijuana. Well, why would you lock them up for it then? And why would you leave people in prison for sentences longer than what they should have been serving so you could get some free labor if you know the struggle so much? Huh. Pain and joy that comes from those experiences. And do you? Because where's Obama from? Wasn't he born in Hawaii? And what a lot of people refuse to talk about or fail to mention, his stepdaddy was a rich Asian billionaire. So he's not a part of the people that he's referring to either. So I guess I'm confused. You're not a part of the people either. It has nothing to do with your education. You did not grow up in the same environment that a lot of people grew up in. He said to work hard. And that's how you know he's just thinking of some ish to say. Because he, okay, you didn't just sneeze and now you got to rub your nose like what I did. You over here just trying to, hmm, what can I say? What can I say? Okay, let me just think of something quick to say. Boom, 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 boom. And do more. and overcome and achieves the second highest office in the land. Okay, then he said achieves the second highest office in the land. Well, I got a video I want to play right now. Was democracy best served by President Biden stepping down and basically handing you a nomination? You didn't have to go through a primary process. You didn't have to fight off other contenders. That's not really the way our system was intended to work. President Biden made a decision that I think history is going to show is rare among leaders, which was to put country before self. And I am proud to have earned the support of the vast majority of delegates and to have been elected the Democratic nominee. I am proud to have received the endorsement of leaders around this country from every background and walk of life to fight in this election over the next month for our democracy. But I think this truncated process is why people think or say they don't really know who you are. Look, I've been in this race for 70 days. Does it need any more explaining? You didn't. So Obama's going to go and say, well, you know, she she's the second highest uh, ranking person. I mean, she's a vice president, but she didn't even get it how everyone else got it. So I guess I'm confused. So that was gifted. How many black people do you know were gifted the vice presidency? How many black people do you know were gifted being CEO or being insert some high position? So I guess I'm confused. This is not, we're not, what are we comparing here? This is not the same thing. 
Now we're gonna get back to this video that I saw. And this is from Savvy Sab. She's the one who posted it. And it says, Obama tells black men that there is a low turnout for Kamala. He said it's not the same support that he received. Gee, I wonder why. I just want to go into some of these comments down here. Um, let me see this one, show more. No matter her identity, if she still upholds harmful policies that keep white supremacy and austerity in place, she's not good for us. Obama's binary thinking assumes that we're supporting Trump, but for many black men like myself who don't rock with him either, for the same reason, reasons we don't rock with Harris. Someone says that he's the reason we would not be fooled twice. Actually, we would not be fooled three times, thrice, okay? Because, uh, sorry, thrice, okay? Because um, he was in presidency for two terms. Once you open your mouth and ain't none coming out that we like. You can't then be like, well, I mean, see, y'all just don't want to support black people. No, we don't want to support you. Okay. That's just what it is. Okay. There's none of this extra shaming and guilt trip that you're going to be able to do, do. Hello, hello, hello. I would greatly appreciate it if you can actually support my little small business called Latrice Limited. It is on latricelimited.com. So as you can see right here, I actually sell candles and a wide variety of other items as well. This is my big forehead, okay? Um, but I actually wanna show you just a couple of different items that I do sell. Um, this is actually going to be a part of my soap collection that I have. As you can see, I have a variety of different soaps on here. I actually have two pages worth of soaps and um, everything is handmade okay natural clean ingredients as well um, you can also see right here these are my candles all right they're all handmade everything vanilla sweet roses uh, sage and vanilla vanilla and sweet roses are actually my favorite scents that i do have i also have a few other items on here I'm actually going to go and show you all the bath bombs that I do have. As you all can see, there's eucalyptus and sage, uh, sweet pea harmony, and so many more. And then we're just going to finish off on the gift sets that I have. There's a variety of them from like the big ones like this for 45. And then you have some of the smaller ones and you have these itty bitty ones down here that includes essential oil blends. Definitely shop with your girl definitely help your girl out i would greatly appreciate it this is like my little baby over here okay <laughs> um i would greatly appreciate it and enjoy